Hello and welcome to Mead Week on Brian Spann. On this edition, a local Navy swimmer wins gold, the Fort Meade Museum readies a 17,000 pound gift, and news from the latest Facebook town hall. These stories and more, but first, September is designated as National Suicide Prevention Month. Here's a report from Army Now with the Secretary of the Army. This is the Army Now. The Army has designated September as Suicide Prevention Month. A stand down has been directed by the Army Vice Chief of Staff for September 27. An Army Suicide Prevention webpage has been created to provide resources on suicide prevention training at preventsuicide.army.mil. Secretary of the Army John McHugh says suicide prevention is something that must be dealt with head on. While we can study and we can analyze, the best thing that can happen is have leaders involved at every, every unit level on up and make sure that soldiers care about each other. That kind of human uh, initiative is probably the most immediate and one of the most effective things any of us can do. Soldiers and family members can contact the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. Fort Meade Suicide Prevention Stand Down Day is coming up September 26th. Meanwhile, a swimmer from the local area, not named Michael Phelps, is making headlines in a London swimming pool. Navy Lieutenant Bradley Snyder, a member of the Annapolis swim team, was blinded while attempting to disable an IED device in Afghanistan in September 2011. He's in London trying to collect more gold for Team USA in the International Paralympic Games. Army Sergeant Abigail Waldrop has more from London. The U.S. is racking up medals in the swimming events, and in his qualifying heat, Navy Lieutenant Brad Snyder set a Paralympic record in front of thousands of people. Uh, I've never walked out in front of this many people. Very crazy, a lot of nerves or whatever, a lot of excitement. Second hip in the pool, felt natural again. Lieutenant Snyder lost his sight in Afghanistan less than a year ago and is already accomplishing huge feats and making an impact on audience members. I think it teaches all of us that no matter what's going on in life, that we can really overcome it, you know? I mean, if these folks can overcome, you know, physical disabilities, you know, there's no excuse for us, you know? Later this evening, his calm demeanor, confidence, and speed in the pool earned him a gold medal in the 100-meter men's freestyle. Glad to touch the wall first. I'm really glad to set a precedent that I hope you'll... Snyder will try for even more gold today on this Friday. We'll have all the results for you next week on Mead Week. Meanwhile, if you saw the Disney movie War Horses, you might have noticed the big German field guns in the battle scenes. The guns are replicas of World War I era German field guns produced by the famous Krupp Works in Essen, Germany. Two of these guns were taken by 1st Army troops during the Battle of Argonne in 1917. Since then, they've moved around with 1st Army, and since 1966, they've been displayed or stored at Fort Meade. One of the 17,500 pound guns is now on its way to Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Well, Fort Sill is the, the home of artillery within the Army. That's where the Field Artillery School is, and that's also where the Field Artillery Museum is. And uh, this is a significant piece within the history of modern artillery. And they don't have an example of it. We've got two. Uh, and honestly, other than the connection to First Army, neither one of them really has a direct tie to Fort Meade. So, we're more than happy to send one down there where they're able to, to better utilize it. Um, they're going to restore it, and exhibit it. On Thursday, Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Ed Rostein hosted a Facebook town hall meeting. The third in a series of virtual meetings, this week's town hall featured more than 75 submissions and posts. Hot topics this time included traffic safety, garbage disposal in residential areas, and AFI's construction updates. We'll compile all the results and I'll have more for you on next week's edition. Finally, a traffic note, the cutting and removal of structurally unsound trees is continuing this week. On Monday, tree work begins at 8 o'clock. The westbound side of Mapes Road between MacArthur and English, the turn lane will be closed in the morning. At Mapes Gate, inbound from Route 32, most work will be completed from behind the fence. A small portion of one lane might be blocked off for equipment staging. On Tuesday, Building 4407 off Llewellyn, the majority of the back parking area adjacent to the playground will be closed off. On Wednesday, tree work begins at 8 o'clock affecting buildings 4415 and Chisholm Road, buildings 219 and 229. However, there should be no traffic concerns for these areas. On Thursday, tree work begins at 8 o'clock and lasts till 3 in the following areas. The gazebo at the back of building 2257, the claim circle in front of building 4411, and building 4407. As always, if you have to drive through these areas, please use extra caution. I'm Brian Spann, that's Mead Week for this week. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend.
and a great mead week.